Good morning, good morning, Mallory Wesleyan Church. Welcome to our church service today. It's great to have everyone here, new and old faces, young faces, uh, faces you don't see very often. Oh boy. Wow. Yeah, look at these first few rows here, huh? Someone told me they put fish bait up in these first few rows. I don't know what that means, but, uh, we have to have, so I was talking to Steve, Steve Gleason the other day. He said you have to have the right kind of bait in order to get the right kind, you know, the right kind of fish or the right kind of season. So <laughs> we'll see if, um, if, uh, chocolate candy is your deal. We got, we got some of these up here in these first few, few rows for people. <laughs> it's, that's good. I'm glad, Shirley. Uh, see, all of our January resolution diets are over, so it's March now. So that's, that's how it works. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, God bless you and welcome to our service this morning. God is moving. Amen. Yes. God is moving in our nation. He's moving in many nations at this time. I don't know if you've, you know, I talked a while ago about that revival in Asbury Seminary, but I saw the other day it was another country that was having breakout revivals and things throughout our world. It gives me hope. It gives me hope to know that people are coming to God in droves. Coming, people are coming and seeking God, seeking his face for who he is. That's why we're here as Christians, to honor him, to show him um, the, the, you know, the glory and honor he is due, but to save those people that are out there burning in the, in the fiery uh, homes of this world and that they would come and seek his face. And so that's my prayer today. As we start off our service, or anyone want to share a verse or something that had happened to them this week that was speaking to them? Something they wanted to open with this morning. Yep. Can't find it. Okay, I got one. What's that? Come on. Yep. Okay. <laughs> wow. Rebellion. Thank you for sharing, Faith. I'll, I'll say this about hell, um, because cause I, I'll think of this. Many of you have shared with me during the time I've been here the grief of your spirit for people who don't know God or a world that seems at times to be turning its back against God. Hell is a place that has no God. And, no hope. and we are, are blessed to be in this world to have what we have of his presence here and we will have even more of his glory and wonder when we get to heaven because we know Christ is Savior. But if you think of hell as not being with God, what what would happen if, you know, there was no God around? And and some people have those those thoughts in our post Christian society about wow, how things are going bad, but we still have a world that has our Lord here um, with us of serving a living God. So I wanted to share from Deuteronomy. I know it's old old school here, but I'm going to share from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 this morning. I'm, I'm actually going to read the whole chapter, so um, hopefully it is encouraging to you in some way. It was encouraging to me this week. Um, so Deuteronomy chapter 6. These are, these are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed to teach you to observe the land that you are crossing to the Jordan and possess, so that you and your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live, by keeping all of his decrees and commandments that I give you, so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it will go well to you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord you, 
the God of your ancestors promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. These commandments I give to you today will be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, give, I, to give you a land large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of goods you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. And when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God. Serve him only and take your oaths in his take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the people around you. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not put the Lord your God to the test, but as you did at Massa, be sure to keep the commands of the Lord your God and the stipulations he decrees and he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight so that it may go well with you and you may go and take over the good land that the Lord promised and the oath of your ancestors, thrusting out all of your enemies before you. And as the Lord said, be uh, sorry, in the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations and decrees of the laws the Lord God has commanded you? Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us up out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders and great and terrible on Egypt and Pharaoh and the whole household. He brought us out of there to bring us in and give us a land that he promised on oath of our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all of these decrees and to fear the Lord our God, so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as in the case today. And as if we are to carefully obey this law before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. Huh. And so I was reading a bit of Deut Deuteronomy this week um, because what, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stay ahead of us in this um, reading schedule as we, as we talked at the start of the year, um, trying to read through the Bible in the whole year, right? We're, we're walking through the Word and we're trying to get through um, all of that within a whole year. And so this Deuteronomy 6 passage is actually this next upcoming week. And a funny quotable thing on uh, in case you missed it, for those who are reading, there was not a February 29th this year, just so you know. So you had double reading that day. But um, to try to keep up with a consistent daily reading of the Bible. And, you know, as a pastor, what happens is, you know, things flood my brain and get all in there. And uh, th this stuff is just wonderful, how God fights the battle before us. And all we have to do is obey and trust him in that battle. And whatever battle that you're fighting and whatever thing you're going to face, he will be there. And as we teach our sons and we teach our families that God is there, that we serve a living God, why do we do these things? Well, we do them because we know that he will help us. And so I, I wanted to share a bit about my, my personal life today. So I, I guess I'm the one that has the soapbox today. Isn't that nice? I get to stand up here. Uh, a few, oh, there we go. Uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about um, confession and your authentic self and being real. And I wanted to make sure I'm real with you today. Um, I've been pretty stressed the last um, month, few months. Uh, I just, you know, and I continue to preach it and to give it to God first. And that's what I do. But it doesn't always make the stress go away. And that's what happens. And I get stressed. I get pressure on me. I get... Uh, things from all sides at times. Uh, there's nothing anyone 
specifically can do to help. But, I, but this last week, as my wife and I have been praying for, I don't know, months and upon months, um, some of that stress was lifted this week. Uh, someone said that they had heard from God to help us in a way. And um, she said to say it this way. Uh, where is this? We were blessed with an unbelievable gift um, that came out of nowhere that we had been praying for, for some of um, different finances that we had been struggling with. And though God, God took care of it. And the person who, who gave that to us said, all glory to God. And it is him and his glory um, in that anonymous person. So I just wanted to thank God for that and just say that God, with, with, with our obedience, with our consistent faith, and with consistently knowing and asking, and can you help us through a situation in my life this week, God showed up in a big, big way. And so all honor and glory to him. Uh, amen. And so, so I, I do have one of these uh, big old rocks. Uh, I, it was a big old rock, so I'm going to be putting that in our prayer jar today after the service today. And if you have answered prayer, make sure that you put that in the prayer jar. Uh, as we go forward in March, um, I want you to think about uh, engage, uh, engaging with us and coming to some of these events. Uh, such as the women's breakfast here this, uh, or, or ladies' breakfast here this Saturday at Good Gollies. Uh, we'll have our board meeting here next week after the service. And then the 19th, uh, we want to have a prayer and healing service here. Uh, have people come up. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go tell them. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Um, and so come, come to, to those things. The prayer healing service will be up here anointing people and laying on hands um, for any things that you need to trust God for and need to give to him and lay at the foot of the cross. And also the 19th, we'll have our potluck uh, fellowship afterwards. And then the Family Resource Center Gala, there's a sign up out there. If you would like um, to attend... Uh, you can just you can buy your tickets. I think they're available online uh, for that. But if you want, if you need help and need to uh, come and want to join us at our, our church table, there, uh, there's a sign up there. I would like people to sign up, and we can help sponsor some tickets uh, for people to be able to attend the gala this year. It is on Thursday, March 23rd. Doors open at five for silent auction. And dinner program starts at six. And they usually have a wonderful speaker and worship there as well. So. Huh. Other announcements I forgot besides my little son? Okay, go ahead. All right. Well, we're going to get a little green here this month, I guess, with our Irish potluck uh, dinner. So make sure it's green and a good one. No, oh, that was a really bad one. Make sure you talk to Sherry if you have a, if you were going to bring an Irish dish for our, our potluck this week. What my son came up to me and asked me and said, well, when I mentioned walking through, walking through the Word and reading the Bible, uh, he asked me this morning, he says, Dad... Are we supposed to literally step and walk on the Bible? Is that what walk through the word means? And I said, no, no, Daniel, that's not what it means. And what I told him, it means that we need to read our Bible. But the reason I use the words walk through the word is because we need to live our Bible. And we need to live uh, through that. And so that's, that's, a, that's a, something to think about as we continue forward today. Other announcements, other things? All right, let's pray. We'll get our worship started today. Lord God Almighty, thank you um, for caring for us, for helping us, for blessing us at this place in this church with all the stress and all the things that have been going on. You continue to show up. You continue to bring us through the, from the minor struggles to the major ones. And you will continue to be there helping us every step of the way. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please stand as we worship. Sing a song of celebration. Lift up a shout of praise, for the bridegroom will come. The glorious. Willingly on our knees you bow, 
With all our hearts, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are. as you are before your God. Come, come,
Lord God, you said to seek, to knock. And Lord, we are standing here at the door. We wish for your presence to fill us, to help us, to guide us, Lord, in this life. Lord, you continue to help this church and your people. Bless us today, Lord. Help us. With whatever struggle we come with, help us to lay it at your feet, to confess and to be real with you and with ourselves. Because, Lord, we have nothing to hide. We have nothing to hide before you. You are our God. You are so, so awesome. You're just awesome. Help us to come to you. Help us to seek you in times of trouble and need. Continue. Continue to help this church. Help your people. And help this nation. We ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Ah. We can have a couple of volunteers for helping with this morning's offering. Um, we're going to take a collection today. Uh, we have Mr. Daniel with his nice suit. And we have Mr. Mike here coming up. All right. We will take a moment and reflect on God's glory and worshiping him. Uh, through our tithes and offerings. Let's, let's take a moment here. Lord God, thank you uh, for these gifts we're about to receive that your glory, that your life, that your light would reign in us and through this church and through your people here at Mallory. Uh, multiply this bless, blessing that we receive today so that we can continue to serve you and help you and, and do what we need to do through our ministries here at our church to grow deeper and deeper in faith with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
It is the first Sunday of the month, and uh, we gather together on the first Sunday um, to celebrate, to remember communion, to remember that Jesus came to earth for us, suffered for us, died for us, and now lives for us as well. And we're celebrating that with thousands upon thousands of other Christians throughout the world who take communion, who remember these words that Paul said, the words that Jesus had said. From 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, given thanks, and said, This is my body, which is a remembrance for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is my cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink, it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. If we could have a couple of volunteers to help me with serving communion this morning. Thank you, ladies. And so um, if you've never been here before, what we do is we serve open communion, which means if you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're welcome to take communion with us today. Um, in t- the, the bread is matzah and the juice is grape juice in case there's any allergies. But, um, and what we'll do is we'll individually take the bread and uh, when, so when you get receive the bread, you can take and eat. Um, but with the cup and the juice, we will hold that and um, taking the bread individually helps to symbolize our individually coming to Christ and taking the cup helps us symbolize uh, together helps us symbolize our unity in Christ. So take and eat. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love.
shed for you. Take and drink. Lord God, as we have entered into a time of the year where we remember you, we remember you for your sacrifices, we remember you for the pain and the suffering that you felt at the cost for us. As we've entered into Lent season and Easter is just around the corner and Passover is just around the corner, Lord, we remember that you gave it all for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us first, for loving people such as us, for carrying that cross all the way to Calvary, for enduring what you needed to endure. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if you noticed some of the decorations that were up here, um, but I, I, I don't really, you know, I don't celebrate Lent often, uh, but it is a time of reflection of Jesus and his, you know, time with, 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 with a sacrifice uh, before starting his um, mission there. But it also seems like it's a time to remember the agony and the, the things going on with him. And so we'll, we'll continue to keep that in our thoughts as we celebrate, as we're so joyous um, for him for what he had done. A um, couple of things. I don't know if I forgot earlier today, if I get, I get distracted sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. We get distracted sometimes. Uh, but I did want to make sure that I thanked immensely uh, Vic Lewis for helping out this week. Where is he? Thank you so much, Vic, for helping out this week because we had that water leak in the, in the thing last week and he has been here helping and making sure that, that that stuff is taken care of. So I'm just so grateful to Vic, our head trustee, and all the trustees for all the hard work they do. Uh, yeah. 
Though no one ever in this church likes to get singled out. I'm telling you, they don't like the, the praise. It's okay. It's okay. We want a servant's heart. Um, and the other thing as well, um, I, a couple of you know this, uh, who might have been on the board or have heard it, but uh, my, my wife Sue had been helping out as an admin assistant, a secretary here for the church for um, quite a while here. And uh, what we did is we have started a transition, a uh, new admin, admin assistant secretary who was helping us out here at the church. Um, she has stepped up and done a fantastic job so far, and I think we'll continue to help out and do a fantastic job. And so Jeanette Prescott is our new admin secretary. Thank you. And so um, if you have needs in, for events or announcements or communication in the church, you can always come talk to me as well. But Jeanette is helping with some of that flow of that stuff now uh, from sign-up sheets to advertising to different things. And so she is helping her. And so let's pray. Um, let's pray for her. And we'll pray for our church today. So can I lay hand on yeah, come on. Come on. Part of the job. All right. We'll call it hazard pay. Okay, let's go. Uh, Lord God Almighty, thank you uh, for Jeanette taking on this uh, task and this duty. Lord, uh, bless her as she um, takes on this increased responsibility and stress. Help her to see the joy and the love that ministry has here at Mallory and grow her through this experience and grow our church through this experience and um, her taking on this um, wonderful task. Lord, continue to help us abide in you, abide in the vine, abide in your will and your leading in this place and in this church, and just, just help us immensely, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Oh. All right. And if anyone else wants to volunteer, you don't have to come up and I'll pray for you, okay? That, that's, that's not. But volunteer for helping out with a ministry or an idea or something going on. Feel free to um, you know, catch my ear and talk to me about it. I would love to know that sort of thing. Um, we are actually looking into the church budget here the next uh, couple months for the upcoming um, but church calendar budget year. So those who may lead a ministry or uh, want to have extra financial help for a study they're doing or... Um, worship or other things, a children's ministry or whatever, uh, kind of run those numbers for that next year, um, kind of think about what those might be, and we'll be talking here soon. So, All right, let's dismiss the children, right? Are they head down yet? Ah, children ages 3 to 11 are welcome to head down for a children's church this morning. Oh, yeah? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. oh. Um, so my wife Susan, Sue, sorry, my wife Sue, uh, when we got here at 8 a.m. last Sunday, we walked in the door and there was, I heard water flowing and I'm just like, what's going on? I went up and I saw the women's bathroom and it was spritzing everywhere and so she was the first one to pick up the mop and bucket and just go right to town and help out in immense ways um, as I'm trying to call frantically, what do we do, what do we do, and uh, trying to look at the damage and get, get a mop and bucket of my own. So very thankful to her. And very thankful that it's, it's, you know, it's dry. Uh, Serve Pro, I think is their name. Serve Pro has been here most of the week. The one thing they were worried about is there's a, a wall in between the two rooms there, and they were just worried about that, and it got all dried up so far. So we'll take a look and continue to make some repairs and assess uh, any other damages or things down there. So, All right. Other prayers, praises. That's a praise for me, by the way. It's a stress off me. You know, nothing horribly horrible has happened, but it's good. Grover.
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Ah. Oh. Other praises, other prayers? Laura? So, um, I, I don't know. I, I have my two cents. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll wait till I preach about it, I guess. But uh, no, well, so being seeing society from the lens I see it from for the last 15 years as a mental health therapist is, is kind of interesting. Um, I'll tell you that everyone tries to find a solution to their problem in many, many different ways. Um, and the problem is that we need a loving God who loves us, supports us, and, and, and only there, there is just one way. There is just one way. And so I, I don't know how to say it more simply than that. Um, and, and if you can help others to understand that, then you're going to be at the starting of... Um, you know, encountering, encountering many, many people of different walks who are trying to solve their problem in different ways. Yeah. What do you say, D?
Yeah. So, so I'll repeat um, some of the, the sermon and the thoughts from a few weeks ago when we talked about revival. Um, revival starts with you. It comes with an authentic confession, an authentic you coming to God. I understand it seems contradictory to us to say, well, these people need God. I should help them, help them, God, help them, God. But an authentic, sold out life in view of someone else who says, I need that, is the way this, these, this revival in Asbury had started to say that they, the person came up, they confessed, they said, wow, that's just like me. I need God in that way. And they came up and they confessed. And I need God in that way. And then the next person came up and they confessed. And they needed God in that way. And that is how it is because it starts with you. The one thing that we may make sure we do is point, point that finger at us to say, how can I become a real authentic uh, relationship, real authentic person with the Lord Jesus Christ? So, Oh, boy. We got more. Okay, go ahead. Who else? Who else we have here? Who wants to share? Who's got praise or prayer? Mike, you had your hand up earlier. Why don't you share with us? That's a good prayer, Mike. Uh, we all need to stay on that straight and narrow path. That's the hard one to, to see and to make sure that we do. And so that's good. We'll continue to pray for you um, for the different um, issues you have going on with things. And it's great that organizations are there to help and, and help you stay afloat there for a bit with, with the struggles that you have. So it's good. Yep. We'll pray for Bob, Bob and Cindy. Hampson, we'll make sure we pray for them today. All right. All right. Terry?
It takes a lot to humble yourself to to get help um, in different ways when you know you can't do it. So, so we'll pray for our roof for that family and make sure that we are keeping them in our prayer in our minds. So, others, surely. That's what we do when we're distressed. When we're distressed and so stressed, we try to cobble together plans made of straw and wood to fix our things, but we need the actual precious um, plans of God that actually stand the test of time. So, Other praises, prayers? Mike? Okay, so your wife's traveling, so we'll pray for her travels down there. Lori? We're very grateful you're back, Lori. So when I said earlier today that we put the decrees and laws on our household, on our forehead, on our hands, so that our sons, our daughters, and our grandchildren can know what it means to walk with this as, as our guide. And they need to be able to see you do that. 
I know we, we sometimes live in a, you know, a, a separate world. This is adult things and this is child things. But if they don't see you living a faithful life, a full of faith life, where are they going to learn that from? And so uh, I praise God for the little reminders from those <laughs> people who saw people stand in faith and pray and say, we just need to give that to God. So. Ah, well, that's a whole sermon. Okay, go ahead. Well, God is here, and he is working. Um, are there any other prayer requests before we take these before him? All right. You're welcome to bow your heads and hearts where you are or join me up here at the altar to pray before him. Lord God, we do seek you today. We seek your face we seek your love. We seek your joy. We seek you to fill us through and through and help us in our daily walk, carrying our daily cross before you, before others. Lord, you have gotten us through so much. You've gotten us through stresses and troubles that we couldn't even imagine. You've gotten us through cancer, through medical issues, through back issues and, and leg issues, through hearts coming to God that we never thought possible. Lord, you continue to provide and we are so grateful and thankful to you. Lord, we ask and come humbly before you today still asking for help today for all these prayer requests that we have had before you. The long-standing requests that we continue to ask over and over again. The medical issues, the, the times and troubled people that we know just for a bit of light and guidance to know where that narrow path is so we can continue forward and continue the fight for you another day. Lord, help us, guide us, and give us your joy, which will be our strength through this time, through the perils and the temptations and the dangers that we know are ahead. But with you, you fight the battle before us. You go before us as you did with the people of Israel and take down giants. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the helping hands this last week and the people who have stepped up to volunteer and, and, and work for our church and to help us continue forward as a Mallory Wesleyan Church. Thank you for helping and to, to start to heal Grover's uh, back and hip pains through medicine and through the doctors. Lord, we just praise you. Thank you for the spirit of revival that is in our land and in our world, having people come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We thank you for all of the help uh, that Mike has received and that you continue to bless him with. Lord, we, we continue to ask for those who haven't uh, come to our church in a while or uh, are just uh, out or sick, that you would help and heal them. You would build them up. You would keep them and let them know that their family is here and waiting and that you are here and waiting for them. We pray for Bob and Cindy who are away this week and any struggles or um, things going on in their lives that they're struggling with and they're having um, a tough time with, Lord. Lift them up and build them up today and give them your strength. We pray for Terry's family, for his wife and his grandson, Lord, for any stress and stress uh, needed uh, treatment there for his wife, uh, that you would be there in the midst of those things and you would help her and see her through all of that. You would help her reach out to the doctor to get the test 
uh, to get the medicine that is needed, or you would just heal her through and through so that she would not need that anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Mike's wife as he's, she's going to be traveling down to Florida, that you would give her safe travel and safe company, um, both mentally and physically as she's traveling with different people. Help her, Lord, during this time. And Lord, we pray for uh, Carlene and Jim and for any need they have for a roof or finances or anything that would pour in for them uh, abundantly, overabundantly to support and help their home or whatever plan you have for them or will you have for them to encounter these situations, Lord, that you would bless them today. You would help them through that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, sad to say it, fellas. But every good fishing trip has to come to an end sometime. Oh, you can't just keep pulling them in over and over again. But I'll tell you today, I think it will be special. I think it will be good. We've been talking about how Jesus had called fishermen how he calls us to be fishers of men and to evangelize and share our authentic selves and who we are in Christ. So I'm going to say something here. I want you to think about it. You are the most powerful tool that God will use to change someone else's life. You are that tool. When you share who you are, when you share who Christ is through you, you are the most powerful tool that God can use to change a life. Your authentic self. It's what we, what we talked about a few weeks ago. It's, it's what we have in the tackle box. We have ourselves. We have our testimony. We have our witness. We have what God has brought us through and what he has done. We have declared praises and blessings immensely in this church of the things that he has gotten us through. And as a preacher, part of what I do is I share knowledge. But this series is, though it has some knowledge in it, and I will will be using scripture, it is about application. It's about you actually going out and doing it. What good's a fishing rod and reel in a boat if it stays in the garage all year? Come on. We need to... Fishing and being fishers of men is action-oriented. And one of the things that I do is I'm an overanalyzer. It's, It's what I do. I think, oh, if I know more about the problem, if I know exactly what to say, what to do, then I'll be able to make that leap and jump onto that boat and go fishing. But I'm going to tell you, many other things in my life have shown me that if I take the action first, then I catch that fire. And I catch that spirit and I say, wow, I need to more, know more about this so I can do this and do this greater. Not that I'm doing it, but he is doing it through me and relying on his power and strength. And so our book that we've been looking at is called Purple Fish. It's a fun book by Mark Wilson. It's got a lot of fishy stories. Uh, What's our quotes here today? Okay, let's what we got here. (sighs) May the holes in your net be no larger than the fish in it. (sighs) That's a great one right there. (sighs) What's the next one here? I'm fishing for men with a certain kind of bait, the bait that I'm offering, not a candy, but it's a very specific thing that I'm offering, which is a deeper gospel and a deeper conversation. This is what we have in our tackle box. This is what we have. Um, we, we have these authentic you. And then we talked last week about where to go 
Um, where, where do we go to find these, this fish? You know, we need the right fishing spots to go. And, and what, what we talked about is that Mark and his team, they would take this uh, time with daddy, this daddy time, this father time, and they would ask his father to where to go. And it's our responsibility to trust and obey, to ask and follow where he may lead. Those little inklings or those little things that he says, you know what, you should talk to this person today or you should help that person today. If you haven't heard, heard from that person today, maybe you should. And we have to listen to those still small voices. But today, all I have left for you are some fishy stories, I guess. Huh. And so I'm going to share one more story from Purple Fish, and then we're going to share another story from the Bible of fishing. And so, uh, let's see here. I've got so many things earmarked in here. Maybe I can find it. One sec. Uh, this is actually chapter 8 called Lost Treasures. And so you can listen along with me. It, 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 I think it's a pretty captivating story. I'm sorry if it's long, but I'm going to try to do my best with it. So here's our fish story for today. Jesus is better than great news. He is the ultimate purple fish. He is the greatest treasure the world has ever seen. And this leads to an important question. What does Jesus treasure? What matters the most to him? People. More than anything else in the universe, Jesus treasures people, and that includes you and me. We are his purple fish, and Christ cared enough to come to rescue us personally. Perhaps it would be good to rethink how we view those who we see far from Christ. We write off people too quickly as lost causes when we ought to consider them lost treasures instead. Jesus came to redeem and restore people, particularly the lost, the broken, and the hurting people. And this includes all of us because everyone is lost, broken, and hurting in one aspect or another. We're a bunch of dinged up wrecks. <sighs> Jesus rectifies us and what we've wrecked, however, bringing beauty from brokenness and grace from disgrace. Don't hide your brokenness. Give it to God. Put it in his hands and perhaps you'll find a treasure there. Ask Christ to patch the holes and see what he does. And when we bring our broken pieces, he puts it together in a beautiful new way. I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15:26. And God invites us to bring our emptiness and brokenness to him, and he will make us whole again. Oh. Well, that was definitely inspired. Oh, here's the story. Sorry, I lost the lost the story here. Where is the story that I wanted to share? Okay, here it is. And so a young woman pleaded to me. Can you come visit Harold? He's dying of cancer. Harold was an ex-convict who lived a violent, godless life. Of course, 
Harold probably won't receive you, she said. He's likely to cuss up a storm and kick you out. He's done that already with a few of the hospice workers, but a visit from you might be good for him. And so I agreed to go and invited my friend Randy to come along as my bouncer. I brought my Bible, anointing oil, and a prayer shawl. The young lady met us at the door of Harold's bungalow, and I told him you're coming, coming, but he shut down and won't communicate. I'm afraid you won't get anywhere. In the living room, frail Harold sat hunched on the couch in his pajamas, and he did not look up. Harold, I'm Pastor Mark from the Wesleyan Church, and this is Randy. We came to encourage you today. No response from Harold. I brought you a gift, Harold. It's a prayer shawl. Some wonderful women from our congregation make these, and while they knit, they pray for the ones who will receive these shawls. Would it be all right if I place this shawl over your shoulder and pray for you? Harold didn't say anything. He just sat there. And since he didn't say no, I took it as a yes, and I placed the soft shawl over his shoulder and said, Harold, if you don't mind, I'd love to share some scripture with you and anoint you with oil, and then we'll pray. Still no response. So I moved forward, and I opened my black leather Bible to Psalm 23 and handed it to Randy, and then gave the bottle of anointing oil to Harold's friend and said, I would like you to anoint Harold when Randy reads the part that says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. She seemed honored, though a bit nervous, to do that exactly right, and I, I gave her simple instructions and she was ready to go. Harold did not look up or say anything. And Randy read Psalm 23 with passion. And as he got to the fifth verse, the young lady reached forward and tenderly making a cross on Harold's forehead. And then I prayed. Harold needed some faith, so I loaned him some of mine. I prayed on Harold's behalf for salvation with as much faith of that as I could muster. Harold needs you, Lord. Please come right now to help him. I asked God to forgive him and cleanse him of his sins, and I prayed for Harold to be completely enfolded in the gracious love and peace that God has. Now I concluded my thanking God for the depth and width of his mercy. And when I said amen, Randy said, Look. A tear trickled down Harold's wrinkled face. He didn't say a word. But the tear testified to something. I did remember Philip Yancey's observation, Grace, like water, flows to the lowest part. Two days later, I heard that Harold had died. The family called to make funeral arrangements. And they said, everything changed after you came. He settled into a deep peace and was not agitated any longer. It was exactly what Harold needed. And he was the mo here's the most amazing thing, that prayer shawl that you gave him, he held it tightly and would not let it go. And even when we tried to take it from him, he just clung to it like a life preserver. So it stayed wrapped around his shoulders until the moment that he died. And I was astounded when this man who lived so far from God passed away that he was let, wrapped in holy love. Jesus is a friend of sinners. He is not willing that any should perish and takes great measure to grant grace to needy souls. And the best way you can share your faith is to loan it to someone who needs it. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There is mercy with the Lord, and he will surely give you rest by his trusting word. So I thought that was a story worth sharing because um, that's what we're looking to do, right? And our fishy stories that we need to share of how big God has changed our lives or the lives around us. This is what, when you watch a, 
a movie and it says, based on a true story, that you want to know. You want to know where people were, how they felt, and how they stand now. We bring our experience, we bring ourselves, we bring our testimony, and we bring our story to the encounter with others. But the one thing that you have to realize, and I think the one thing that takes us away from actually evangelizing to people, is that God gives us everything we need for those encounters. This pastor, Mark, had no idea what to pray, what to say, what to do. He had a prayer shawl. He had the Bible. He had oil. And he did what he could with what he had. But God had already gone to the battle before him. God was there, and God, through his wondrous miracles, changes hearts and minds and souls of people. It just, it's amazing. And so when we think of ourselves as ill-equipped, and I say that you are the, the best, that you are the strongest, that you are the thing that is going to change lives, we shrink down. We say, no, no, it can't be me, Pastor. But it's true. God gives you what you need. And so our scripture today is going to come from John chapter 6. A nice little fish story here for you. And so John chapter 6 starts off with Jesus and his disciples here and says, Sometimes after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw signs that he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up to the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. And the Jewish Passover festival was near. And when Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? He asked, this is only to test him, for he had already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. But after another disciple, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up here and says, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fishes, but how far will they go among so many? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down, and about 5,000 men were there. And Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks and distributed what they wanted and did the same with the fish. And when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over and let nothing be wasted. So they gathered and filled them twelve baskets with all the pieces of five barley loaves left over for them all that had eaten. And after the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. And Jesus, knowing what they intended to come and make him a king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. And so my little uh, child's lunchbox, Two Fishes, is my next fish story from the Bible. And uh, we can talk about the miraculous things that God does through you and can do through you and the miraculous healing and things. And that's why the crowd was coming, coming to him, right? Because he knew, they knew that he had done miracles. They knew he had done things. But I think to put ourselves into this mindset of what truly the miracle was, we have to put ourselves into a a first century peasant who basically is living day to day. You know, right now you probably have food in your fridge. They don't. They have no fridge. They have no electricity. They got no plumbing. They might have a little knapsack full of something, a little child's meal or something. You know, we talk about the desperation of not having some stuff at the 
Walmart shelves, and they didn't have the stock of the thing I wanted, but these people are living hand to mouth. They're living with nothing. And this person gave them bread overflowing and fish overflowing. He saw the need and fulfilled that need exactly where it was. And he had exactly what he needed. He needed God to bless this kid's lunchbox. And then they had 12 baskets afterwards. But in our fish story example, as I shared last week, it's not necessarily about the miracle and the power that God displays. It's about the testimony and the story. How many of those 5,000 people went out and said, this person fed me for a day till I was full. This person gave me what I needed. Not only the wisdom of God Almighty, but a full belly. And sometimes that's what we do. In both examples from my Purple Fish book and from the, the feeding of the 5,000, God goes ahead of us, prepares what is needed, fights the battle for us, and then our simple step is to do what God wants us to do at that moment so that he can be a miracle in that life. And in your lives, he will give you what you need to share. I, again, the one thing that I want to talk about today is that you sometimes will feel like you're not enough, but you are. That God has put you in that place, in that moment, in that time, as a Christian, to share and to witness to God. And so, why do you follow Jesus? The crowds are coming so they you get another miracle or maybe a healing. I don't think they were thinking about bread and fish. But why do you follow Jesus? And has that changed throughout your growth of being a Christian? Because if we're going to put ourselves in the mind of someone who we're sharing with, what made the difference for you? Was it a loaf of bread or a dinner? Was it a prayer shawl? Was it a cup of coffee and saying that I'm praying for you? Was it that a friend gave enough care to say, I'll give you a ride to the church today and I'll help make sure that you can get in front of the real living God and his word today? What helped you get there? Because that's what you need to start sharing with people around you. I, I preached um, last um, fall uh, The Art of Neighboring, which is another wonderful book I really liked. And it was about, in our geographic area, knocking around our neighbor's doors to say, hey, I'm your neighbor. Um, you know, hello, get to know me. Because in our current modern world, sometimes we don't do that anymore. We're so isolative in our own little niches that we don't expand ourselves to that geographic area. And there's an appropriate level of closeness, you know, borrow a cup of sugar, uh, can I come over for coffee, or can you pray for this, this um, thing that's going on in my life? These are different levels of that level of connection between you and your neighbor. And so you have to know that, and when you, when you go, you knock on their door, or you share with a friend, or whatever level of that connection is, where is their need and what do they need that day? And if you've spent that daddy time, if you've spent that uh, time with God ahead of time praying for them and saying, God, lead me in this situation or in this encounter with this person, I'm just going to say neighbor because I'm using that example today, but it can be a relative, it can be someone that God has put on your heart. Give me the right words to say or the right things to do or the right gift to bring so that a life can be changed, so that you can change that life. Because ultimately, that's what we have. We have our story and his story. And so are you going to share it? Are you going to give 
give enough information so that you can um, tell people about you and be, be uh, you know, your authentic self. And part of who you are is a Christian, and that will just come naturally through those encounters. Because building a church, building a, a God's people in, right now is about relationships. It's about building people in your life, seeing the authentic you. And because I know the Spirit of God is flowing through this nation and flowing through this world, He is going to touch that encounter. And if you don't have or if you can't share something about you, then you share something about God. Better yet, you share something about God about you. And it will be great. And I wrote this down from some of our prayer requests earlier because it was fitting with our... um, our sermon topic here is you give what you have. That's all we have to give. We have ourselves. That's what we do. And so there's no secret to, to fishing. You, you, you plop a hook in the water and the fish kind of bites it. You get up into the, into the, the boat uh, or the shore. Well, maybe all the other fishermen will tell me wrong, right? Uh, just doesn't work that way, right? There's a couple little bit of preparation that you do. I don't know. You make me pray over the pray over the rod and reel and the chat. I don't know what you what you do in your own time. Okay, no. But these are the key tools to try to be fishers of men in this world today. It's not like it was in our. Uh, in, and now we're in a post-Christian society. It's not like it was before, where you could just say, "Hey, come to a church because it's a nice thing." People come to church because they need God. And we want them to ha- encounter that and encounter that family of God here. Let's pray and we'll get our, our last song and uh, we'll dismiss for the day. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you for these real history. I know I call them stories, Lord, but we thank you that these things happened and you continue to encounter us where we're at that you help our congregation here be able to share in boldness their faith and themselves so that you are glorified and help us to rely on your strength, your wisdom, and your narrow path to get us there. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Sorry about that. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want. Faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind and transform it. I will conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Righteousness, righteousness.
make my will conform to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Take my heart and form it. Take my heart and transform it. God, we thank you for this day. We ask you to bless this congregation, continue to help them along their path, and help them encounter others who need Christ. Put them in the right place, the right time, with the right words, and the right heart to save lives. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Have a good night.